Welcome to Silver Sea Review. I want to this one There, maybe on the off chance we can watch it slow down behind us. Okay, this podcast will have an introduction, a movie review, a movie recommendation, some jokes and quotes, and then an inside the intro section. So, all the times are listed down below. If you want to uh, skip a certain section or just listen to a certain section, feel free to. I'm trying to position myself correctly. Uh, if you want me to review a certain movie or watch a certain movie, just leave it in the comments anywhere. <coughs> I feel like I'm too far away from the camera. Um, so I decided to go ahead and look up what mics would be uh, the best for audio only. Just uh, since I'm going to do that in December, I decided to go ahead and start researching it. And I found out that um, mics that you can connect to like just a cell phone are actually really good, uh, like clip-on mics. And uh, so that's why I decided to order. And uh, it, they're, they were very affordable, and I found a good brand, so I went ahead and ordered it. And now I have it on right now. So we're going to kind of test this out. I have no clue where to put it on me. Um, I might need it like right in front of me, I don't know. We'll see how this works. This is actually the perfect area to test it because there's uh, um, a drop in water level. <laughs> I don't want to call it a waterfall, but there's water falling a very short distance on both sides of me, making a little bit of noise. And I know from previous videos that can be kind of annoying and distracting, so this is perfect because I'll be able to see what the audio sounds like. Um, I'm recording the audio on my cell phone, and then, of course, the camera is also recording the audio. I'm not going to ever overlay the audio I record on my cell phone onto the video, So, but the audio I record on my cell phone will go onto the MP3 version, like on SoundCloud. So, I'm kind of interested to see the difference. I know there's going to be a big difference in volume, but just in general, I want to see what it sounds like. It's a little cool today, so if I uh, sound like I'm cold, it's getting pretty cool now that the sun's going down. <laughs> I uh, had to actually get this, I had this mic shipped somewhere else. I had to get it from them this morning, so I was late to work, or not late, but uh, I had to stay later at work. And then on top of that, the sun's going down so early right now, so a little bit behind. But. So anyways, um, I was going to actually hook this mic up to my camera, which is a uh, Sony RX100 or Mach 3, but um, apparently you can't do that. Uh, I looked online and there's just no possible way to hook a mic to this camera. I, it's just, it just sounds really stupid because these cameras are awesome for like, take, they take high quality video, especially I think the Mach 5 is out right now, and I mean it takes 4K video and does really amazing stuff, so I'm surprised you can't attach an external mic to it, um, but you can't, so that's why I'm doing the cell phone thing. And you got like a really long wire it can reach, but nope, not going to work out. Which is fine, I don't really mind. Um, I think Amazon accidentally gave me two days shipping. Um, I have had to contact Amazon a few months ago, I guess, because the thing they were shipping to me they still hadn't shipped it after like four or five days. I think it was four days, and they they said like five days was the limit they would take to ship to you because I don't have Amazon Prime, the free two day stuff. And uh, so I contacted them, asking them. I was like, you know, since you guys started doing this Amazon Prime stuff, the people who don't have Amazon Prime, the shipping has just gone completely way down. And uh, I asked them why that was because I'm mean, used to. I could get stuff from Amazon really quick, and eBay and some other places took a week or more, and that was just expected, and then all of a sudden Amazon was like every place else. And uh, pretty much they sent an email that when they contacted me back that they prioritize, which I can understand, the people who pay for Amazon Prime and get the two-day shipping, because they have to prioritize it to get that out in two days, so that's why all of a sudden I'm noticing a big jump in shipping. Uh, they weren't necessarily penalizing me, that was just part of their workflow. So, maybe the items that I ordered, the mic and the other thing I got to make it $25 so I could get free shipping, um, maybe they just happened to have them at the warehouse and they were able to ship them out quickly or whatever, I don't know. But either way, came in two days, so I'm not going to complain, it's awesome. Um, 
that was it about the mic and everything. Uh, I saw a movie woo, uh, when I was on my vacation recently. Watched a movie on TV. It was called uh, Act of Valor. Or Act of Valor. And uh, it was alright, giving this one a 5 out of 10. Uh, decent, not a big, I'm not a big war movie fan, so, like, it was just, it was good for, like, a general action type movie or drama or whatever you want to call it. So, that's gonna be it for the introduction. Uh, let's go into the movie review. Today I'm gonna do Venom, giving this one an 8 out of 10. There will be spoilers, so if you've not seen the movie and don't want anything spoiled, you'll need to see it first. Actually, I've never seen this area with flowing water. I'm kind of curious what it looks like down there. Maybe it would have been even cooler down there. I might go down there next week, because in the summertime, moving water is just gone within a couple days, but being wintertime, I think this water will kind of stay around for a bit. So there's a big lake behind me, which you saw in my previous video, so that's where the water's coming from. Anyways, um, on to Venom. Um, oh, I feel like the spacecraft or whatever that crash-landed in the first of the movie would have made a much bigger impact. I mean, they talk about small things that make big craters, so I mean, that should have really made a much bigger explosion and hole and all that stuff. Um, when the uh, alien suit takes over her, I don't really know what to call them. I want to call it all Venom, but it's not all Venom. So I'm, I don't know. I'm just mainly against the alien suit, I guess, when I'm not talking about Venom. Um, but anyways, when it's taking over her and her bone's sticking out and it like heals it, that was kind of gross, but kind of cool. So um, I was kind of confused why... Uh, his girlfriend was fired. I don't know if she was working at the same company he was working for, or if she worked for the space guy that he really pissed off, or what. So, I don't know. That was a little weird. I must have missed something. Um, it was a little boring setting up his backstory. I mean, I guess it's needed, but not the most interesting introduction to a movie. Um... I couldn't understand why the alien suit decided to switch bodies with the older lady. Like, and then eventually switch bodies with the girl. Like, I couldn't see a pattern why it was switching. Was it just because it was killing the host? Or, but see, it shouldn't have killed them that quickly, but maybe it was just slowly killing them, so that's why it was switching? I don't know. It didn't, if it did explain that, I didn't catch it at all. Um, in the first scene where the, uh, guys robbing the convenience store. I couldn't really tell if Tom Hardy was like wanting to help the cashier or if he was just like hiding and ashamed of himself because he was hiding. So like I personally thought at any minute he was going to run out and just like bash the dude in the face but that's why I couldn't tell. It's like is he hiding or is he like getting ready to go out and attack him or what's going to happen. I guess they were trying to set it up for the later scene I'm going to reference. Um, so do people still look at newspapers for jobs. I figured that was an online only thing. I mean, I haven't seen a newspaper in years, and uh, I know they still exist, but do people still use those for jobs? I thought that was kind of weird. Um, why would the apartment building allow that other person to have his music that loud? I mean, the majority of apartments, definitely around here at least, have strict rules on how loud you can have stuff. I mean, that would be that was so loud, anyone in the building could have heard it and reported him. So I thought that was a little bit strange. And the fact that he wouldn't even, like, knock on the door and tell the guy, hey, could you please turn it down, even though he was a terrible person and didn't care. Um, maybe it was just the city he was living in. We're all nice around these parts. I'm kidding. We're not all nice. Um... So I couldn't really tell how much time had passed, but she already was in another relationship. That seemed pretty weird. Like, I felt like it was only a couple of days, and she had already gotten to know this guy, and he had a key to her apartment, and I was like, wow, that's, did I miss how much time had come by? 
Uh, maybe she was just a terrible... I wasn't a big fan of her character in general, though, in the movie. I mean, she's... She was pretty hardcore on, like, no forgiveness and no... Not accepting any sort of apology and no second chances. And, I mean, it seemed like she had a very conditional love with him. And it was like, no, I only love you if you have a job and if you aren't doing stupid things and don't make any mistakes. So, I didn't really like her character. Until the, well, no, I'm sorry. She had that mindset until the end, and then she was like, oh, okay, things are kind of cool now. Like, I don't remember, I should have wrote something down on it. I don't remember what all she said, but it looked like they were kind of getting back together at the end. Why? What changed? Like, yes, he was a slightly better person because he was trying to save the world with a suit. That's what she suddenly was attracted to. Like, I mean, I would have instantly wrote her off, so. And what happened to the other dude, the doctor? What did he do wrong? So, yeah. Like I said, I did not like her character throughout the entire movie. Um, I thought for sure the um, alien suit that was roaming around was going to be the one that got Tom Hardy, not the one in the lab. So, that took me by a little bit of surprise. Like, when he was in the lab, I wasn't expecting that at all. When, it, when the lady attacked him. Um, I definitely saw the MRI scene coming. Um, sorry, bubbles keep going down and will like catch the corner of my eye. Um, in the series, because I watched the Spider-Man series growing up, the animated series, um, Venom was always, um, his, uh, suit was interrupted by noise. That's, at one point, because Spider-Man had the suit first, and, in the series at least, and he actually, it was starting to turn him kind of mean, so he said the only way he could get it off was to go up into a bell tower, and when the bell was going off, it was able to get it off of him. And uh, then it goes off to whoever it attaches to that actually becomes the Venom. I think when it was on Spider-Man, it was just called like Black Suit Spider-Man or something. But, uh, so anyways, I knew that noise and stuff like that was going to interrupt the suit. So as soon as he was in the MRI, I figured that was going to happen. And they actually, they used not the MRI, but they used the noise thing several times throughout the movie, so that was really cool that that was part of the suit. I don't know if it was from the comic books or the series or whatever. Um, it was kind of weird how they knew he had a parasite. Like, I don't know, it was weird that the his parasite, the venom, was actually showing the same symptoms as a parasite from Earth. And that they were able to discover that. I mean, honestly, them getting any results back from the test that they ran on him was strange because it was all freaking out and everything. So I guess they maybe there weren't MRI results that they were getting back, but I thought that was really strange. I was like, they're just going to throw all this out the window because his suit freaked out, and then they're like, oh, we got the test back. And, yeah. I heard a creature. Um, which actually, there's a guy fishing right back over there, so hopefully he can't hear me. Um, so I was a little bit confused how they had more of the alien suit to kill the female scientist whenever they found out, because Tom Brady had taken the Venom alien suit from that lab, and I thought when that happened, they didn't have any more, and then they had more, because like, they were so angry, I thought they had lost all of it, and then they had more to kill the female scientist. And then still they had the one roaming around. It's like, how many... I didn't really understand how many they were split into, and were they each, like, a different organism? So, that was, that was kind of weird. I just couldn't keep track of that for some reason. In the series, they had Venom and Carnage. And Carnage was exactly like Venom, but or, uh, the suit was exactly like Venom, but, and I don't know if it was Carnage in the movie or not, but in the series, I'm pretty sure Carnage was, he could um, transform his arms into big weapons and stuff a lot better than Venom could. So maybe that was Carnage, I don't remember if it ever said the name of the other person in this movie, 
but in the series at least, you just had Venom and Carnage. And Carnage was way more, like his name described, way more destructive and didn't care about anything, was a bad person. And Although I don't remember Venom being a very good person in the series either, so. But, yeah, it was kind of weird keeping all the specimens. Apparently there's a third one, which I think I mentioned this later on. We don't really know what happened to it. Like, the other one that was in the lab, did it combine with the evil one that was trying to destroy the world, or did it, like, is it still there? I don't know. I don't remember seeing the lab blow up or anything, so I don't really know what happened to that one unless I missed it. Um, they did a good job about me wondering when the uh, roaming suit was going to pop up. Um, I was like, I wonder how that's, because I mean, that they kept it out of the you couldn't see it, like, they, it was in the back of your mind, though. It's like, are they going to come back to that, or why? Why is that one roaming around, and why do we even see it roaming around at all? And then it finally comes in, so I thought they did a good job with that. Um, they had the classic Wilhelm scream, which I mentioned, I'll always mention that if I hear it, and I did, so it was in this movie. Um, I guess Venom is technically a good guy. Um, it's kind of strange, I mean... I don't know. Like I said, in the series, I don't remember him being a good guy at all, so... Like, maybe he was an anti-hero? Maybe he's an anti-hero in this one. He just wanted to not let the Earth get destroyed, but he was still willing to bite people's heads off, so... I don't know. Kind of strange. I didn't really see that coming. Like, I figured he would defend his host, but... I honestly didn't even know it was going to be two of these suits fighting each other in this movie. Um... I mean, I saw the trailer where the second suit makes the two big swords and it goes like that. I thought that was Venom doing that in the trailer. I didn't notice the different shades at the time. There's another bubble. Um, there was a Stan Lee cameo, because this is Marvel-associated movie. And I think Stan Lee, didn't he invent Spider-Man or come up with Spider-Man or something like that? I'm not sure. I know he came up with some sort of comic book thing. I'm not a comic book person whatsoever. I love superheroes, but I'm not a comic book person. I gotta have movie pictures. I, I can't handle books and comic books and stuff like that. I got no imagination. Um, and I don't like to read. So, as I mentioned earlier, we had a callback to the scene where the convenience store is being robbed. It's by the same guy, and Tom Brady's in the same spot. And this time he's got the suit, of course, so he's able to go up and scare the crap out of the guys, so nice callback. Um, it was a little strange, though, how he shows his power to people. Like, he showed his power to the uh, cashier lady, and, I mean, I guess as an anti-hero, you don't really care. Because I guess Deadpool doesn't really care if people know who he is until his girlfriend freaking dies. They got undone. Spoilers for Deadpool 2, if you haven't seen it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, the ending wasn't terrible. Not great by any means, but not terrible. Uh, this was a much better movie than I was expecting. Um, I really thought it was going to be subpar, and I know the critics right now don't like the movie. I don't give a crap. I hate critics. Um, they, not, I don't have anything against critics, but they never align with what I like, so it's 100% useless for me to look at the review of critics or the review of anyone really I mean if someone wants to recommend I watch a trailer for a movie that's great but I, I've never found anyone that I can rely on to be like oh I gotta see this movie because this person loved it like my taste in movies is just so different than most people's and the movies I like and everything and what I like about the movies so I, I never read reviews or critics or anything like that before seeing a movie because it just does absolutely no good. But that's it for Venom, 8 out of 10. Gonna go on to the movie recommendation. This one's gonna be Dracula Dead and Loving It. This one's from 1995. And this movie is similar to Airplane. It's a uh, slapstick comedy, uh, parody type humor, uh, it's got Leslie Nielsen, I don't know how to say his last name, 
and Mel Brooks. Um, it's a comedy, of course. Very, very funny movie. Um, the description says, Dapper Count Dracula relocates from his Transylvania castle to Victorian London with his slavish assistant, Grinfield, in search of new blood. He finds it in a pair of beautiful young women, Mina and Lucy. When Mina's straight-laced fiancé notices her, his future bride's odd behavior, he calls in his mentor, vampire hunter Van Helsing, to save the day. And pretty much that's it. Uh, Leslie Neeson is Nelson is it's it, it's N I E L S E N, which is weird. And you would think I've heard his last name plenty of times, but I never have said it. So I run into that a lot with uh, actors and stuff when I'm trying to read them. Anyways, he's Dracula, and <clears throat> he's trying to get them, and it's comical that she just happens to be dating the apprentice of Van Helsing, and you've got them battling out, and it's really funny, so go check it out, Dracula, Dead, and Loving It. We're going to go on to the jokes and quotes, which might be interesting, because I have my phone hooked up to the mic, so we'll see if this works. Okay. I'm just going to assume it's going to work, and I'm going to hit the button when it's time. Um, so, as you can see, I'm a uh, standing outside right now, so if anyone asks, I am outstanding. Uh, <laughs> that's not cool. Man. I'm going to try to unplug my mic and hit the button. So you're not going to hear it if you're listening to any group. It's still not working. There we go. I wonder if I can plug my mic back in here. That was a test. Um, I have a phobia of elevators, so I'm taking steps to avoid it. Okay. Oh. Okay, I'm back. Okay, I'm still in the testing phase of this mic. This is a test. <laughs> so that's why I'm, I had all that silence there. Apparently, it will not play through the speakers on my phone when I had the mic hooked to my phone. And uh, when I unplugged it, it stopped the voice recording. And I guess I should have hit record, but instead I hit play when I tried to start it again, which started it at the beginning. So I had to stop it and start a new one. So. Lesson learned there. Um, I don't know. I'll have to think about later how I'm going to do that. Um, since my cell phone is what I need to make that sound. But I'll miss. Maybe I'll just like say it or something like that. But I like the sound of that. I could add it in later. Not to the video, though. Okay, so I think if I... I'm working this out right now on, on video. I shouldn't be doing this. But I think if I... Uh, unplug it, which stops it automatically, do the two sounds, plug it back in, and actually hit record instead of hit play. And it should keep recording, and then I'll just add in the, uh... oh, but then it can't, it won't have gotten my jokes, because when I unplug it, I can't record. Hmm. I don't know, I'll have to think about it later. Um, quotes, today is a good day to try. That's what I'm doing, I'm trying something new. But, uh, that's just saying... You can start trying uh, on whatever you want to do today. You don't have to wait until the end of the year for New Year's resolution. You don't have to wait until the end of the month, whether it's a diet, a new job, anything you want to try. Try out a new hobby, try out going to a new location, meeting someone new. Today's a good day, so, which, well, maybe not today because it's getting close to being over, but <laughs> any day you feel prepared to do it, just do it. And uh, even if you don't feel prepared to do it, just do it. Um, it never hurts, so give it a try. The other quote, holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. And there's another one that um, 
I don't think I have it in my quotes because I have this one, but it says, like, the container that anger is held in, um, cause, it causes more destruction to the container that anger is held in than anything it's going to pour it on. Pretty much that saying, and that, that works for jealousy, that works for any negative emotion. Pretty much, you're only hurting yourself. Um, if you're constantly angry at someone, if you're holding on to a grudge, if you're jealous of something, it's not going to hurt them. And even if it does, it's not going to hurt them very much. And it's going to do so much destruction to you. So do your best just to let it go. And especially with anger, like it doesn't matter how mad you get at somebody. If you just hang on to it every single day, it's going to hurt you. And they're not going to be affected by it at all. And I mean, you can go up and voice your opinion to them, but then let it go. Forgive them, forgive yourself, whatever you need to do, but don't hang on to it. So, that's going to be it for jokes and quotes. Um, inside the introvert. So I went hiking with a big group again, and uh, I previously told you a story about one of the groups I went hiking with. Um, that one was their introduction hike for the season, and so was this. This is a different group, a uh, slightly different area. And it was just as awkward. I knew it would be, but got to get out there and meet new people. So, um, yeah, I got there five minutes before we were supposed to, maybe ten minutes before we were supposed to start the hike, like the time they said we were going to start the hike. No, we stood around for 30 minutes. And we were just standing around in, like, a empty parking lot area. And it was completely awkward. I was just, like, standing there. I'm much better if I'm, like, sitting down and... Uh, I don't like, I don't know what to do with my hands when I'm standing right, like right now, I just kind of, like I can't, I can't put them in my pocket because that means I'm not approachable, so I'm just kind of like, I don't know what to do, what do I do with my hands? <laughs> Wait, is it, is it Anchorman or is it like Talladega Nights or something where he's like, I don't know what to do with my hands when he's like being interviewed? So, that's me, awkwardly standing there not knowing what to do. Um, luckily there were like four or five other people that were also awkwardly standing there, and I could clearly tell. I didn't want to go up and talk to him, but I could clearly tell. Uh, one guy finally came up and started talking to me. I went to college in the area that I was at, and he's lived there forever, so he was talking about all the changes and stuff, so I was able to kind of keep conversation. Although it wasn't overly interesting, it was better than not talking to anybody. So, yeah. Then we finally got going, and uh, everything was good. I was able to uh, we stopped several times, and each time we'd stop, I'd get in a different position in the line. There were like 35 people, so it was a long line of people. And uh, so I got in different positions and was able to talk to different people while walking. <clears throat> That's what I like to do, is talk while walking. And, uh, but yeah, afterwards, they were having like a hot dog roast, and I was like, I feel like I've already uh, had my awkward situation for the day, so I went ahead and just skipped that. I also had someone that was hounding me to get pictures done, and I had someone else that was waiting on me for a video game, so I was like, I'm just going to go ahead and take off instead of staying around, and it's like, I feel like I have socialized enough for this, this meeting. But, uh, the next one, I did my first, like, model clothing shoot as a photographer, um, like, lights and backdrop, and she was, uh, changing different clothing, changing into different clothing and stuff, and I was taking pictures. And uh, it was alright, I'm not a big fan of it, the lights weren't mine, the work, neither were the backdrop. The guy, it's really stupid, the guy wants to do this himself, and he bought a nice camera and all this gear and stuff, and I, he wants to do the pictures because it's like a clothing line that they've got a website for, but he, I guess, tried to do the pictures and they just weren't turning out like what I can do, and I did this guy's engagement pictures, or no, maternity pictures. and. Uh, so he ends up having me come take the pictures, and he's got like all this gears. I don't have backdrops or lights or anything like that, because I don't like, I don't like portrait pictures at all. The only reason I do it is for money. Um, I would much rather just take nature pictures all day long, and you can't really benefit financially off of pictures like that. So I just do portraits whenever I can to make money and help people out. So that's what I ended up doing. Uh, it was super uncomfortable when she would go to change clothes, because change clothes, because I'm fine in silence, so I'm fine just sitting there. Like I would adjust the lights when she was gone if we needed to change things around a little bit. But okay, I'm back. I kind of got the feeling I was going long. I'm probably getting kind of dark too. 
Okay, so I'm almost done though. I'm on the second introverted story. Um, I was talking about how when she would go to change clothes, it was silent, and I was fine with. But he kept, he was uncomfortable with the silence, and he kept trying to talk. And he was talking about um, wanting me to come, like starting once a week, and then maybe twice a week once business picked up, and so I could take pictures of all the new stuff. I didn't want to do that at all. He's like over an hour away from me, and I barely make enough to cover the gas price to get up there and back. And uh, which I don't charge hardly anything for my photography. I wouldn't really charge anything at all, but people are weird and think something's wrong if I don't do that. So I charge a small fee, but mostly if I can, if I feel like I'm helping somebody out by taking pictures, I just do it. Like it's enjoyable for me. I don't know why I would need to charge. But man, my family and friends really hate the prices I charge. Like it bothers them way more than it bothers me. But. Uh, so anyways, I was really hoping this guy would just figure it out himself. Like I said, he's got all this stuff. He's got the nice camera, the backdrop. All he's got to do is like figure out the angles that I'm using and just recycle those. Like you're not, you're, you've got the same type of products over and over again. So you don't really need my help to do that. So, and it's been like three weeks and he hasn't contacted me, which is fantastic. Um, I was planning on just saying I was going to be busy and not being able to. I was going to try to not be very reliable to this guy which I hate doing, but I'm not, uh, I don't want to come out and say, dude, I don't want to work for you, so instead I'd be like, that's my passive aggressive is to be non-reliable. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, that's going to be it for that story. The last story, um, this one's not so introverted, but I was um, looking for something to do on vacation in the town that I was in, because my dad was like, just wanting to hang out at the hotel. I was like, no, I need to go do something. So... I uh, was recommended to go to a park, and it had like a day fee, which is fine. But around here, you always pay the fee at the gate. Like they've got a little box, and you fill out your information, pay the fee, put it in the box, and then put something in your car, and you're good to go. Well, I went in. I guess I had followed somebody in and didn't realize it because the gate stays open for quite a while, and the gate is supposed to close. And uh, so I got in there. Couldn't find anywhere to pay because I wasn't technically supposed to be in there until I paid. And uh, so I finally go across the street from the park, and that's where the site area is, the park, or the uh, ranger station, I guess. I can't think of what to call it. And there's a whole bunch of cars parked there, and it looked like, I couldn't really tell if the cars right next to me had people in it, but it looked like the front cars, everyone had gotten out. I don't know what was going on. I don't know if it was like a big family or a big get-together, and they all just kind of parked there. But I sat behind, I'm assuming, an empty vehicle for a good couple minutes before I finally was like, like, they were kind of looking at me. Like, I wonder if that guy knows that he needs to come up here. And that's kind of what I was assuming. So I was like, I guess I need to go up there. So I finally pull up there and go inside. Everything worked out, paid, came back around. And my stupid cycle died on me right after I punched in the code to go into the gate. And I'm guessing the battery needs to be replaced on it. It's done that a few times. It hasn't, like, it didn't die on me. It didn't, uh, I killed it when I was putting in the code, like, on purpose. And it wouldn't start back up. And uh, it's done that to me a couple times, like, doesn't want to start up. And like I said, I probably need a new battery. Uh, I bought it used three years ago, and I haven't put a new battery in it since. It just started doing this. So, but anyway, so I put it in neutral, heave it over to the edge because there's a car behind me which the car didn't even go past me. He ended up pulling off to the side, and he was like trying to talk to someone else, I guess, but I wasn't paying attention because I was trying to figure out why my cycle wouldn't start. And uh, once I pushed it over there, it started right up. What in the world? So I went ahead and drove angrily up to my trail, and uh, which Texans do not know what steep and difficult really means. Like, it was steep, but it was not difficult. It was not very long. Like, it was steep, and then you're like on the top, and it's good. Their steep and difficult is ours are easy to moderate. So, but it was still fun. It was a uh, neat walking the trail, definitely different scenery and everything like that. And uh, which I was worried that my cycle wasn't going to start up again. But I was like, there's no point worrying about it until you get back to your cycle. So I didn't really think about it at all during the trip. And it did. It started up fine. I was able to get home and or get back to the uh, hotel, and everything was good. I'm gonna glance at this real quick to make sure I. Said everything. 
I didn't read any of this. I just went into the store. Yep, I guess covered it all. So that's gonna be it for this video. Um, there's an introduction video out there, so if you watch it, it'll kind of update you on everything that has to deal with this podcast. Um, all my older episodes are on, or all my episodes are on YouTube. So if you want to watch older episodes or listen to older episodes, you can find them on there. Uh, new episodes go on to SoundCloud, the audio version of it. Um, they, uh, which the YouTube has video and everything. So if you want to see why you're hearing what you're hearing, you can see it on there. Um, SoundCloud, they stay on there for a couple months, and then I run out of room and have to delete them. Um, I've also got Instagram and Twitter, which you can contact me on. I post silly, stupid things that I find online on those. I don't keep up with them very well, uh, but I don't get any comments, so I don't have to worry about keeping up with comments. And, um, yeah, that's all. So take care of yourself, because there's only one you out there.